In the steps of learning robotics, once we have built the robot, now we need to move towards programming aspects of it. In programming, there are certain practices like making cleaner code, easy to understand through documentation, maintainable that we can easily add features and scalable that this code is going to be applied on the robot, multiple robots and half part is going to be running on the cloud. These all features are going to be implemented on this small robot and we can stretch our learning through all the aspects, mechanical, electrical and programming. Programming is the focus in this video. Add a folder and the way it was done earlier, we have to do that. Just open this and we have to remove this folder. And now it can see that platform INI file is in the workspace here. So it is loading the platform IO related stuff. So we can now perform this build option. I will click it to start building for the ESP32. What it does, it actually starts building the main CPP file. Whole project included stuff is going to be built using this Arduino H. It has been successfully built. To develop different features into a robot, we are going to be utilizing libraries. Now in C++, libraries contain two files, header files and source file. In header files, we write the definitions, we define the classes, names only. We are going to be having this, 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 this. But in source file, we actually write what are going to be the functionality of variables that we have defined in the header file. After that, we include both of these into main.cpp. Main.cpp is the main file that executes the whole code. So this library containing two files, header and source, are included as hash include name of the library.h, which is actually adding the header file. Header file contains the names of the functions and function prototypes, but the function functionality is in the source file. So in this manner, as we have multiple things in main CPP, we will have motor control, then display OLED and then Wi-Fi.cpp. Why do we need these? Because we are distributing our code. Motor controller library is going to be dealing with motors and the PWM and all of the stuff related to that. Display is going to work with the OLED display and nothing has to do with the motor control. Similarly, Wi-Fi, we need to be driving a robot over Wi-Fi. So that's why we need another library for that. And we have distributed these codes into different libraries based on their independent purposes. Let's take a look into the code. This code is going to be available on GitHub. Link will be provided. The main file is main.cpp, which contains the main code that runs. It includes all of the libraries as we discuss the structure. These are the libraries, motor control, OLED, and Wi-Fi data processing. If we open up header files for all of these, you can see no code has been written, just the names of the variables are constant and functions prototype. We can see only the definition of what it is going to be. Here some pin definitions are done in the motor, but not actual functionality is written. Main functionality is always written in the CPP files. Here we can see in motor control, the actual PWM sending definition of the motor directions are written here. In the OLED display, we can see main code for loops for drawing the circles and manipulating the pixel is written. And in Wi-Fi data processing, the actual credentials are written for the Wi-Fi and request response is done. So if we take a look in main CPP, we have serial begin motor setup. That is the function of motor class that we can find out here. That motor setup is from motor control.h and its functionalities in motor control.cpp. Then what it does in the main file, motor control setup Wi-Fi begin the display. And this loop starts that whatever request you receive from the mobile phone driving application if it is forward drive forward and draw the arrow forward if it is backward then reverse the speed and draw the backward arrow so that's how it is working now the main objective of dividing the whole code into different classes is to make our code reusable reusability is making our code easily accessible and usable. For example, the code in motor control, here it is. We want to access the right function, turning the robot right. We can easily utilize it and write it here. 
so our code is very easy to utilize all of the code that is written in these classes can now be utilized so we have included the library just call the function and it is running this makes our code really easy to be accessible the next is maintaining it now if i make some error here if i say abc although it accepts a string i compile it platform io is running the error happens and it says la was not declared in the scope or that would be more obvious example let's move into motor control cpp and at this point i would say qa and then compile the main ini file the main purpose of maintaining is whenever the error happens we can easily understand the location of error through the library it is dealing with motor control motor is not working properly robot is not working so that might be the problem of motor control library not the oled display and not the wi-fi so maintaining is really easy and similarly we can easily understand through h files that what does this code actually contains it's quite readable and we can get an idea okay forward function stop function left right reverse motor setup we can easily understand what is going to be in the motor control dot cpp so that is a higher level understanding of coding practices that we implemented on this robot just writing the code is not the duty of a programmer you have to make it well structured documented and easy for others to work upon it and you will see that for all of these encapsulation maintainability scalability to this specific robot are just an overkill but structured code is a good practice to learn and as we are just learning from this robot we just have to focus on the learning aspect of other fields through this robot